my beautiful, beautiful, lovely friends. Here I am back again for my post market wrap up on this Friday, September 14th, 2018. We have to talk, you and me, so sit down, take a deep breath, and let's let's cover a few things. Let's start off with the basics. How about this market? All right. Stocks did finish the week higher. You should not be surprised because I explained this to you on Sunday, last Sunday. I said I expected the market to finish this week higher. No surprise. Um, a couple of things were surprising, though. Um, and let's try to put that into a perspective. Well, let me back up a moment here. Today, once again, they managed to hit gold and silver. Earlier today, if you saw the video that I did, um, gold and silver were kind of holding their own at that point. Cryptocurrencies did catch a bid today. But look, whatever excuse comes down the pike, whatever they have to do to hit gold and silver, the paper derivative, understand, it's not real, it's not on the elemental chart. But it can be pulled and rigged and they can do whatever they want with it. Nobody is going to look at it. So just understand that's the way it is. But you also know. In fact, let's put a perspective on this. Why it is so important right now to bet against the debt and become your own central bank. This is what I'm talking about when I was alluding to a surprise. Well, here's a surprise for you. We found out that government spending last month, the largest outlay in history, almost half of a trillion dollars. Almost half of a trillion dollars. Where's that cash coming from? We're broke. We're, our country here, the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. We're going to need to borrow it from who? From the Federal Reserve. They're going to print it out of thin air, add it to a digital screen. I mean, seriously, you want to talk about a president here that's relying on the Federal Reserve, unlike any other president before him, unlike any president before him. Way worse than the last guy, President Obama. This guy uh, has already outspent President Obama in the same period of time by a large margin. And, and he really has no choice. He has no choice. Why? Because that's the mechanism. The mechanism demands, are you ready? I know you've heard this before, but I'm going to say it, that debt, cash, which are units of debt, is borrowed into existence in greater and greater amounts just to sustain where we are. You know that. Um, so that's our environment where we are at. It is where we have debts and debts exploding like we have never seen before. Corporate America has gotten richer in a shorter period of time than ever in history under this guy. You don't believe me? Look at the stock market. Open your freaking eyeballs just for a second. Who's gotten hurt here? You have. I have. By being buried under a mountain of debt, which is a terrible liability. Let's talk about the terrible liability of our debt and these escalating trade wars. So at one point today, stocks were up substantially. Uh, I forgot the exact number, but again, we finished at the flat line with regard to the stock market, but we were up there, I think like triple digits at one point. Then all of a sudden we find out that President Trump is saying, you know what, we're going to hit China. We're going to hit him with more tariffs. Boom, here comes the sell-off. Why would that happen if we had the upper hand? in this trade war. Why would this happen? Because we do not have the upper hand. There are many people who are going to say, well, wait a minute. Uh, we could put a lot tariffs on a lot more stuff uh, than China can do to us. But what are you forgetting? What is everyone forgetting? Look here. Don't look here. They're forgetting about our debt, which is a terrible liability, and China is going to weaponize that debt. As far as I'm concerned, the way this trade war is going, um, we cannot win. Something has to change. Uh, and the other day, that little olive branch that was offered by the Trump administration to China uh, to, to you know, get talks going, understand. Negotiation Tactics 101. As you are negotiating, when you reach that point where you say, okay, this is what I'm offering. Let's say you were buying a new car. This was the analogy I used. You and the salesman are kind of like, you know, jousting. You come up with your bottom line price, and then you shut up. You wait for that salesman to say something. If he or she opens their mouth first, they lose. It's the same thing here. President Trump decided to do what he wanted to do because, again, we can't win here. It's our debt 
which is the terrible liability. It's not just about what we can put tariffs on and what they can put tariffs on. That's what they want you to think because you're not allowed to know the bigger picture. Now, knowing what I just told you, last month, largest outlay of government spending in history. Do you think that's the end of it? Absolutely not. There's going to be more. Where's it going to come from? We've got to borrow it. From who? The Federal Reserve, President Trump's favorite place. That's where we go. That's his fall, fallback. More money. Borrow, 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 borrow. We can't control any of this stuff. It's, it's a shame that candidate Trump, when he was candidate, man, this guy had it right. He was going to do something about debts. He was going to do something about deficits. That's why I voted for the guy. He has done a 180 worse than I really, I, I, we all know that whatever they say, um, you know, to get elected isn't what really happens. It's, it's the truth. You remember the wall that Mexico was going to pay for? You're paying for it now? Well, you know, that, that's just, you know, a little bit of this whole thing here. I mean, it, they could borrow cash into infinity to pay for the wall. Of course, that's what's going to happen. That was the plan all along. You have to pay for that wall. It, it's the system. It won't be Mexico. You will. Uh, and just like you're going to be paying for the next month's government outlays, whatever they might be, you have no say-so in it. And where's the cash going to come from? The Federal Reserve, President Trump's favorite place. <laughs> it's incredible. It really is. Um, so look, the situation is, is, pretty, is pretty simple here. Um, the way things are right now, uh, despite the fact that we're hearing warning after warning from, from Wall Street bigwigs about this market, if, if we can continue, when, and what's going to happen, no doubt about it, keep borrowing, find reasons to borrow uh, cash into existence, cre and keep inflating the debt, make deficits worse, put more burden on you, me, the American people as a whole, while corporate America gets richer, well, that's the setup. That's what this is, whole thing has been designed to do since the get-go. That's the truth. Um, you know, it really shouldn't be any surprise to you. Um, really, truly, that, that President Trump is president. Um, because I can promise you, and I voted for the guy. All right, just keep that in mind. And I knew, I knew that if he had become president, I said this publicly, I'm on record, it was a game changer. Stocks would go higher. Uh, well, being that we all understand that this is the United States of corporate America, do you think that the banks, uh, the military-industrial complex, would have wanted Hillary in there? Of course not. Of course not. That's why Trump won. Uh, look, you can believe what you want, but um, President Trump was put in there for a reason for this, and we're seeing it here. And uh, I know that a lot of people aren't going to like hearing that, but that's the truth. We have no say so in anything. And the sooner you understand that, the better off we're all going to be. All right, look, with that said, <laughs> I think I covered some important things here. If you agree, I could use that thumbs up. Uh, it would make me feel good. Please share this video. Get it out there. And look, um, the three most important things that I always leave you with, and I'm going to say this until time immemorial, love each other, care for each other, and be charitable so important that's what all of this really comes down to we have to understand that we are responsible for each other and all of this is just an illusion and we're living in it but if we still stick to those principles universal love love everybody um, care for people care for people that you don't even know about go out of your way to do something nice for someone and be charitable all plays to, together it's so important all right I will see you Sunday for my markets, a look ahead. I hope to see you there. Have a great weekend.